I think Eric and I have gained weight, not you, Steve. What? No, no, I, I'm, I gained a bunch. I'm, 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 I weigh more than I've ever weighed in my life. Excuse me, excuse me, council members, council yeah. members, this is Chief Sergeant Terrence, we're about to go live. Okay. okay. It's okay, they can hear us talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Running for me might help you lose weight. I, I just want to put that out there. Got it. Well, that's what I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Okay. All right. All right. Diamond, how are you? We are live. All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Costa Constantinidis. Mm -hmm. I want to recognize the members of the committee that are here this morning. Councilmember Council Ulrich from Queens, Councilmember Levin from Brooklyn, Councilmember Chaka from Brooklyn, and Councilmember Yeager from Brooklyn as well. Uh, uh, and I am, today we will hold a hearing and vote on intro 1947A. <laughs> Local law to amend the New York City Charter and the Administrative Code of New York in relation to rent regulated accommodations. And on intro 2072, a local law to amend the Administrative Code of the City of New York in relation to greenhouse gas emission reduction methods and outreach and education. In 2019, New York State made significant changes in their rent laws uh, affecting tenants. The Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act of 2019 was enacted and provides protections for tenants from increases from major capital improvements or MCI increases. Under the Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act of 2019, if fewer than 35% of the apartments in your building are rent regulated, your landlord cannot receive an increase for a major capital improvement. In the past, landlords were able to receive permanent reimbursement in rent for MCIs or major capital improvements that provide little benefit to the tenant. Additionally, in regard to emission compliance in the local law 97, buildings that contain even one rent regulated apartment may be eligible for to install pre-approved energy efficiency measures in lieu of meeting specific energy emissions reductions. 1947 would ensure that buildings must contain at least 35% re regulated units to take advantage of this alternative compliance measure greatly expanding the universe of buildings that must meet strict emissions reduction benchmarks. This local law will conform New York State's definition of a rent regulated stable aid building to state law. So we are just bringing these buildings in compliance and into the same categories as state law does. However, this local law places no immediate burden on landlords, no immediate benefits in, in lure to tenants. Consistency with state law is the main benefit and rationale for enactment of this local law. Uh, going forward, this local law will help us conform with the New York Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. Intro 12, uh, 2072 amends the building code regarding reports that must be filed by an owner respecting compliance with an applicable building emissions limit established by local law 97 with non-compliant buildings expecting to, expected to report excess emissions. This local law also requires reporting by the Office of Building Energy and Emissions Performance regarding the methods used to meet emissions limits and total number of buildings in each uh, occupancy category in compliance. Finally, this local law requires outreach and education and reporting on the details of such outreach and education made to building owners, operators, tenants, and the public you know, respecting information provided included information on financing and incentives. According to the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, education promotes awareness, positive practices and wide participate, uh, precipitation. Uh, and and uh, an aware public is essential of politicians and decision makers expect to mobilize the necessary means to limit the effects of climate change. Education is an inseparable part of response strategies so that people feel directly engaged and empowered to act. The largest audience for the climate change education includes everyone. And additionally, the IPCC notes that many actions at the local level can catalyze much larger impacts, particularly encouraging more efficient use of energy. An environmentally informed population is essential to addressing and responding to climate change. That is the goal of the legislation and the only way to a sustainable future. 
especially today when we see that we are on the Greek letters of hurricanes. I think Hurricane Zeta just has devastated you know, Louisiana and the southern part of our country. And uh, I'm praying for those neighborhoods and, and those communities today. Um, but we have to act because this has been, uh, climate change has not taken a break uh, during our pandemic. It has only intensified and made the air that we breathe more toxic and more difficult. Uh, last month was the hottest September on record, which only passed last September as the hottest September on record. Um, so I recommend an I vote, a yes vote on both local laws. They're both incremental steps as part of a broader, broader strategy to reduce carbon pollution from buildings, which is our biggest polluter in New York City. 70% of our emissions come from buildings and to transition to renewable energy use within a useful time frame, I wanna thank the committee staff, Samara Swanson, our attorney, Nadia Johnson and Licky Chala, our uh, policy analyst, Jonathan Seltzer, our financial analyst, all the sergeant at arms, uh, Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Nicole Embiid, Tirza Nasser, everyone who helped draft this legislation and move it forward. Uh, and of course, my staff, uh, Nicholas Wazowski, my legislative counsel, and uh, Terrence Cullen, my uh, communications director. So with that, I will hand it over to the clerk uh, requesting an I vote on both. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on environmental protection, introductions 1947A and 2072A. Items are coupled. Chair Constantinides. I vote aye. Thank you. Levin. Aye. Menchaca. I vote aye. And thank you to the chair. And if I could be added to the, uh, I'm on one of the bills. Uh, if I can be added to the other one, thank you very much. You got it. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. Thank you. Ulrich. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, I had raised a number of concerns at the hearing that we had in 1947, and I'm not quite sure that um, those concerns have been satisfi satisfied. So I, I'm going to be voting no now on 1947 and I on all others, but um, I will talk to you offline after the call and uh, see if we can, uh, you know, rectify or, you know, um, explain some of those issues that I, that I raised at the initial hearing. Um, and maybe I can change my vote for the full stated, but uh, right now I'm still a no on 47, 1947. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vote on today's Committee of Environmental Protection. Introduction 2072A has been adopted by the committee five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions. And introduction 1947A has also been adopted by the committee, four in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I will gavel, uh, well, pretend to gavel uh, this committee hearing of uh, the Environmental Protection Committee closed.